Hi everyone, my name is Nick from Coffee Before Art, and today we're going to be going over uh, a different way to do that vector dash uh, vector addition example that we uh, went over last time, and that's using this concept of virtual memory. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and open up some code. Now this is going to look very similar to vector addition, uh, the previous vector addition, but it'll have a couple changes. So the first thing is, uh, our kernel looks exactly the same. So uh, when we're talking about virtual mem uh, unified memory, we're thinking about this concept that instead of having this separate device memory and host memory and having to manage both of these independently, well, what if I shove that off to some other system? Uh, it takes care of it for me and myself as the programmer, all I have to worry about is my kernel code. Uh, which is ideal for programmers. Uh, managing memory can be messy sometimes, especially when writing very complex, uh, very complex code. So in this case, like I said, our, our kernel is exactly the same. So let's go to our main function. Now, in this case, uh, last time when we looked at our previous example of vector add, we had to declare two sets of pointers. We had to declare our pointers to uh, host memory or CPU memory that we used malloc for, and then we had to you get our pointers to device memory that we used CUDA malloc for. Now, in the case of unified memory, we strip out this process entirely by having one set of pointers, and we call CUDA malloc managed. Now, this says that you know this is going to be uh, we're not going to manage this. This is going to be uh, we're not going to manage where these uh, this data lies at any given time. It's, if it's in the CPU and it should be on the GPU, that transfer will automatically happen. And if it's on the GPU and it should be on the CPU, that transfer will automatically happen, uh, either behind the scenes or sometimes we can give some hints to say, well, you should be on the GPU now or you should come to the CPU now. So we'll have the exact same thing. So we'll, we can treat these still as regular pointers. Like I said, these can be accessed from... Uh, either the CPU side or the GPU side. Um, so we'll just, we'll initialize them and then we'll use the same side uh, dimensions of our grid and blocks. So 256 threads per block and then a grid size of the number of elements divided by our block size 256. Now, even our, uh, our CUDA launch looks exactly the same. And so, uh, this is just kind of goes to show that all that we're really trying to strip away is this idea that uh, uh, we're trying to strip away this idea that uh, we're, we have to manage our own memory. Now there is one new line though, which is this CUDA device synchronize. Now why do we need this line? What, what does this line do? CUDA device synchronize says that at this point in execution, after the synchronization point, all previous events on the GPU have finished. Now, why is this important? This is important because in CUDA, uh, CUDA launches, or when we launch kernels, this is an asynchronous launch. So we go ahead and we launch things to the GPU, but by the time we return from that function, uh, that kernel is not guaranteed to have finished yet. Now, in the case of doing something like CUDA malloc after a uh, device launch like we did in our regular example, CUDA malloc is a synchronous call. And all of our things, because we're doing it to the same stream, which is the default stream, because we didn't specify any, we don't specify any, it goes to the default stream. It will automatically serialize all of those CUDA calls. So in that case, our CUDA mem copy was actually also our synchronization barrier. But this time, because we don't have mem copies anymore using uh, unified memory, we have to explicitly say that I need to make sure that everything's done. Now, why do we need to do this? Well, if we do anything else during this time between vector add and this device synchronize, if we try to access this data, that means we're concurrently accessing the data that's on the GPU and the CPU at the same time. So then we end up with this race condition of who should be accessing what at what time. So for the case of vector add, only the GPU should have access to the code while it's doing that addition, or sorry, to that data while we're doing that addition. 
So then after the synchronize, it looks exactly like uh, our code. So we know that vector add should be done. So then we can just call check answer again and print completed successfully if we complete successfully. Otherwise, we'll throw in a cert. So we can go ahead and build this project and see if it runs correctly. So same size of uh, two to the 16 elements in each vector and we run and we go ahead and we exit successfully. So uh, we didn't have any problems. Um, yeah, so, uh, so functionally it works. Now, how do we improve performance? Because there may be a couple times where we have problems. So think about between when we call malloc managed, we initialize these vectors and then we call vector add. So previously, when we started GPU execution, we knew that the data was going to be on the GPU. And we knew the data was going to be on the GPU because we explicitly called CUDA mem copy. In this case, we did no such thing. So what happens is the GPU starts up and it says, oh, I don't have any of this data. So it does something called a page fault. So it has to page in memory from the CPU to the GPU, which means it basically just has to transfer the memory kind of behind the scenes over to the GPU and get it uh, page by page. Uh, now the size of these pages can be different. I'm not quite sure what the page size is on GPUs, but it's general. So for CPUs, it's generally 4K. So it'll, cha uh, it'll transfer the granularity of four uh, ki uh, kilobytes. Now, how do we speed this up? Now we can give hints to say when, da uh, when data should be where. And we do this by prefetching. So prefetching just says, okay, behind the scenes, you can start transferring data while we're doing other things. So in this case, we can call CUDA mem prefetch async. And then we can say, I want you to prefetch a of size bytes to ID. Now this ID comes up here from CUDA get device ID. So in this case, it will get the device ID of the GPU. Um, if you have multiple GPUs, there'll be multiple device IDs that you'll have to sort between. But in this case, we have a system with one GPU. So when we get this ID, it will automatically be the identifier for the single GPU. And so this just says in the background, so asynchronously, start transferring data ahead of time. Uh, now we can also have on the other side over here, so after our synchronization, we can also start prefetching the uh, device back or the, dev the device memory back to the CPU because we know that you know, the GPU is done, its kernel has finished, it doesn't need the data anymore. So there's a built-in CUDA CPU device ID and this just says, uh, like we don't need to calculate our CUDA CPU device ID, it automatically knows it, uh, it's a built-in so we'll just say, I need C of size bytes and I need it on the CPU now. Okay, and so we can go ahead and rebuild this. And looks like it's rebuilt, uh, the rebuild was successful. So we can go ahead and run it again. And there we have it. So we completed successfully again. So we didn't throw in a cert, didn't, didn't yell at me. Okay, so that is the basics of uh, unified memory in GPUs. As you can see, it's a very powerful thing when we don't have to explicitly manage memory. Uh, and so we use this concept of virtual memory using CUDA malloc manage, and then we can boost performance back to what we get with CUDA malloc using things like CUDA mem prefetch async. Uh, uh, as always, all the code and examples are located on the GitHub page for coffee before arch. So if we go to github.com slash coffee before arch, we go to CUDA programming down here and the readme, we have links to all the, where all the videos will be along with the concepts covered in the videos and then the associating example file. So in this case, we did vector add UM for unified memory and we click there and here's the code. Feel free to download this, play around with it. My contact information is up here, so you can reach out to me for different examples and then links uh, or a list of all the upcoming videos and all of the other series I'm doing can be found at this Google Sheets link. 
As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.